Welcome back, everybody. Good to see you. And guess what? Audio isn't working. Hang on. All right, let's see. All right, there we go. Okay, yeah, see, audio issues, but by God, I was ready this time. I thought this might happen. So y'all got to bear with me a little bit here because what happened is, um, for whatever reason, dude, the audio tripped out on me. And I'm worried that it didn't record right on the live one-on-one -on -one I just did. So that's something I got to look at. Um, hang on a second. Do y'all got audio? Let me know. Does it work? Because I had this problem earlier today. Yeah, let me know if there's no audio. Oh, you can hear me just fine. Cool. Word. Good. Glad. All right. So I got to work on that again. I'm going to get off here because I bet you it didn't record right. It's super annoying, dude. But I had another monitor fail on me. So frustrating that another monitor quit on me, dude. As I'm talking, monitor just falls out on its face. I'm like, dude, really? Come on, man. Like of all things. And another thing I see here is this damn thing isn't right. Let me adjust the screen size, too. This is so frustrating, dude. Oh. The little things that annoy me are when things just don't work as smooth as they should, man. So anyway, good to see everybody here. Professor Keith back again. <sighs> I want to talk a little bit tonight about blue chips, what a blue chip is and what it is not. How does that relate to crypto? What does it mean? Um, you know, how can you derive what we're talking about from that? What are we talking about when we say blue chip? How do you avoid failures? You know, like... What are, the, what are the success stories? What are the failure stories? And how do we come about knowing what people are saying when they say stack a blue chip? What does that even mean? What does that mean to people? So I want to go through a little bit tonight and help everyone where I can understand what a blue chip is and is not. Let's say hey to everyone first. If you haven't done so yet, hit the like button for me. Please, thank you. Um, the more likes we get, the higher up on the algorithm we go from YouTube, which would be awesome for everybody, okay? I'm psyched about that. All right. Um, Let's say, hey, uh, I saw first and foremost was Ron Poteet. Good to see you, brother. He was probably on this at like 3 or 3, 4 o'clock. Frog with a hat. What's up? Tiffany Britt. Good to see you, ma'am. Hol Miss Hollywood. What's up, Pip? Good to see you, Pip. Martini time. Nick Arellano. Ain't seen you in a minute, dude. What's up? Um, Zachary Reese. What's up, Assess? It's not the charts. I know, right? Joe D. Loose Jr. What's up, Jeremy? Mike Bravo. Hey, Keith. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing pretty good, man. Man, it's all good. What's up, Gabo? Good to see you. Manalo. Good to see you. Educated dummy. Hey, real talk. My girls asked me the other day, no bullshit, we're coming back on the way from the swim pool, and they go, Keith, why is that guy's name Educated Dummy? Why does he say that? <laughs> and I had to explain to her what, you know, what Educated Dummy meant, which was hilarious, by the way. I got a hell of a laugh out of it. Um, it tickled me pink, dude. I loved it. I, I got a hell of a giggle out of it. Um uh, I explained to her. Uh, Kayak, what's up, brother? Shorty Guzman, Zvin, what's up? Uh, Ignacio Cervantes, uh, Phoebe50, that's a dope name. Russell Thomason, what's up? Aspiring adult, adult, made my first and successful leverage trade. Let's go, dude. Uh, that's what's up. I like to see people go. I like to see people progress and just be careful with your leverage. Like I tell everyone, there's no reason to go crazy with leverage. Don't do anything dumb. Be smart. You don't have to overthink this stuff. It's really not as complicated as we make it out to be. No reason to overdo it on things. Play it safe. 
don't do anything crazy. You can do leverage if you want, if you have enough risk tolerance for that. Just don't overdo it, okay? Light leverage. So when it comes to blue chips, here's what I get told all the time. People look at me and they say, oh, Keith, what's a blue chip? You should be buying blue chips. You should just stack blue chips, Keith. Don't you believe? Number one, no. There's nothing that I believe in investment-wise. Nothing that I believe in investment-wise. I believe in the charts, and that's it. Nothing more, nothing less, and I won't do anything but charts. Why? Because charts don't lie, and people do. People will tell you all the time about what a blue chip is. This means, essentially, what is the definition of a blue chip? A blue chip is something that is meant to be a market leader, all right? more money in it than most people think it's not going to go away because it serves some great purpose. And because of that, it'll be around for a long time. I guess you could give an example in the equities and stocks world of what a blue chip is by saying something like Google, uh, Facebook, Ford, General Motors, General Electric, Procter and Gamble, um, eBay, Amazon. These are blue chips. What does that mean? That means, you know, the market looks at them and says, these guys are the standard, okay? They're not going anywhere. These guys are the ones who do the best work, and that's why we always invest in them, right? Because they're the best guys. First of all, we can pull up some charts that would say otherwise, okay? But what about people's blue chips that didn't work out so well? And then how does that relate to crypto? Well, I wrote some down here that really hurt people's feelings. I don't even think I can pull up a chart on them anymore. Okay. I'm going to try, but let's start with Deutsche Bank. I don't even think I can pull up a Deutsche Bank chart. I don't even think it'll work. Let's see if we can find out what the ticker was. Um, D-E-U-T-S. Deutsche Bank. Okay. Let's see if we can find anything here that looks good. That's not the right one. That's not the right one. Anyway, I'll just break it down for you. Deutsche Bank was considered a blue chip. And what does that mean by blue chip? Well, essentially people thought that they did great business practice and everything would work out great. Problem with Deutsche Bank. They were heavily invested and over leveraged when it came time for the rubber to read the road in 2008, 2009, 2007. And when they came down to it and it was time to pay up, they didn't have any money because the over leverage in the housing market didn't do what they blue chip always expected it to do. It failed. It went the wrong way on them. They thought it was going to go up forever because the housing market never fails, right? Wrong. People stopped paying their mortgages because they couldn't afford to anymore because the interest rate went crazy. I couldn't afford him anymore. And just like that, one of the top five banks in the world, gone. Gone in the snap of a finger. Think Luna. Okay? Oh, man, Luna's a top ten coin. This is a great project. It's a great thing. We're going to make so much money off of it. Guys, don't you understand? Luna is the way. If you just wait for it, Luna is going to moon, like, soon. What happened? I thought it was a blue chip. You mean to tell me somebody lied? Mmm. People. Man, it's almost like people aren't that trustworthy. How about another one? Sears. I don't even think we can pull up a Sears chart. We'll try. Oh, yeah, we can. This is going to be bad. Let's pull up a six-month chart. Oh, Jesus, Lord, help us. Sears was on top of the world. Do you understand? Sears was the number one business in America, retail business in America for years. They had a Sears catalog that you could buy houses out of and build it yourself. You could buy guns on Sears, clothing, appliances, anything you needed was on Sears. You go to Sears. Buy it. They had a salesman to hook you up. You get your car fixed at Sears. Buy audio equipment, tools, anything. But what happened? Sears was on top for 50, 60 years. 
Snap of a finger, just like that. Another company that does it bigger and better comes along and no longer is Sears a blue chip. Gone. Wiped out. Done. From a hundred and what was this price? Dude, $150 a share all the way down to double O triple O nine. Now it's up to 16 cents right now. Big moonshot, right? Yeah, wrong. Wrong. Blue chip. Apparently someone lied. How about another? How about Lehman Brothers? Lehman Brothers. Don't you understand? It's one of the biggest banks in the world. They've got money on top of money. This is just a holdings cap that they used to have. You know, basically they twenty seven percent of the twenty seven percent of the markets what they had. And as you see it's point oh oh two four now. Yeah, blue chip. Blue chip. Yeah, surefire thing here. Stack blue chips. That's what you should do is you just stack blue chips. Didn't work, did it? One of my favorite phones that I ever had. Nokia. Let me see if I can find a better chart. It was a dope-ass phone, man. I loved that phone. It was great. Uh, you could probably throw it through the Grand Canyon and pick it up, and it would still work and have a full battery. It was an awesome-ass phone, dude. $63 a share. Now, $4.90. Blue chip. Nokia was said, it went on a, look, 1994 to 2000. Six-year run where it couldn't miss. Blue chip. But what happened? Downtrend and it's never recovered. Tell me more about how I should stack blue chips. So stack them. I should, I should just take them and hold them because that'll work. Wrong. If it's not a real blue chip, then why are you holding it? And if you are holding it, is it a buy signal or a sell signal? We go through this all the time. But as this relates to crypto, what is a blue chip? You're going to have people tell you that XRP is a blue chip. Solana is a blue chip. Binance Coin is a blue chip. Cardano is a blue chip. XLM. All these are wrong. None of them are. In fact, it's my opinion, not proof, my opinion that there's only two, Bitcoin and Ethereum, which I own neither of. Why is that? Well, as we know, Bitcoin here is one of the two only cryptos that are traded on the futures market. All right. In Chicago, the CME chart, the CME Mercantile Exchange, one of two cryptos on the face of the world that are publicly traded. Two, Bitcoin and Ethereum. These are the only ones where the public can get on there and trade leveraged through a broker all legit. What about all the others? Well, I hate to break it to you guys, but they're not blue chips. They're just assets. There's nothing special about them. In fact, there's nothing special about Bitcoin or Ethereum. One day, someone could just stop it. And we can't do it anymore. The government could come along and say, hey, no more. Okay, we don't want it anymore. It's done. We're going to outlaw it permanently. Anybody caught doing it faces a 10-year jail sentence or some bullshit like that. That's not going to happen, but the point is they could. That would make this blue chip not so blue anymore, would it? Correct. At what point do you realize that your asset management is terrible and you're just buying things that you like rather than instead of buying things that are a buy or a sell signal? At what point do you grasp that moment and go, dude, doing this wrong? At what point does it click for you that it's going to take more than hopes and dreams to make money here? You know, Strongblock made a lot of people money, but it also broke a lot of people. A lot of people got lucky with Thor. It broke everybody else. Okay? So forth and so on down the chain here. A lot of people got lucky on Doge. What's it done since then? Okay, think about this. Was your investment strategy really as good as you think it was? No, it wasn't. And if that's the case, how can you do better? 
It's the beauty of what we do is the charts. We look at a chart and we determine whether it's a buy or sell, not based on what we may think, what we may hope, or what we wish is to happen. We base it on whether the chart says it's yes or no, and nothing else. No emotions attached. Only the data tells us what to do. If that's the case, what do we see here? Let's dig in a little bit on Bitcoin. On the weekly chart, I see that it maybe closed this CME gap, and I don't really think it did, but maybe. I see a lot of capitulation on Bitcoin. Looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks of red in a row. Historically, never done that before. First time ever for Bitcoin. How long can that last? Well, I would like to say never. It's going to stop. But we've seen other assets fall much farther than that, haven't we? Also important to note, Bitcoin is down this many weeks, but other charts are down for 14 weeks, 22 weeks. So not everything follows Bitcoin perfectly, does it? So let's just stop judging everything based on Bitcoin. Okay, because it's one asset, not all assets. And while Bitcoin occasionally rises higher with the tide or rises first with the tide, that doesn't mean it controls the tide. Okay, everyone pay attention to that. Bitcoin is not in charge. Yes, it's the lead dog, but it's not in charge. Buyers and sellers are in charge, not Bitcoin, okay? Think about that. On the weekly chart, this thing looks terrible. Not a buy signal at all. Now, daily, recently, we've seen this chart and other charts flirting with the AEMA. In fact, there are some charts that have already flipped over that AEMA and are currently showing us buy signals, which is super great, okay? Because we don't see very many of them lately. Since this bull market has failed and it's flipped into a bear market, we're seeing lots of sales. But look at stuff like Sushi here. Sushi has one, two, three, four, five days over the AEMA, trying to break the 21 EMA now and finally relieve some of all this god-awful sale pressure it was pushed down through. Another one, pre-search. One, two, three, four, down, down, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven out of 14 candles. Eleven out of 13 candles. Over the eight EMA, you have an 821 EMA cross. You're flirting with the 50 fib now. Excellent. We've seen some tokens try to rebound here after the horrible downfall. If everything moves with Bitcoin, why is pre-search up so far? If everything moves with Bitcoin, why is Algorand barely going and Bitcoin's flirting with the eight EMA? If everything moves with Bitcoin, why does ADA look a little worse than Bitcoin? Hey, let's look at Ethereum real quick. It's also traded on the futures market. Look, Bitcoin was actually breaking the AEMA and Ethereum is not. Actually struggling a little bit. Well, if that's the case. Kind of looks like we should just look at this separately, doesn't it? Pay attention, okay? I'm not telling you that it's always going to be that way, but I am telling you you need to pay more attention and you need to remove that bias. As you go along and you gain more bias, it's going to be harder and harder for you to keep it straight. Don't be the sucker that falls for the bias. Stay away from that. Monitor yourself, control yourself, and stop yourself from falling for the trap of, this is the next big thing. They don't know that. This is people being paid to say it or people who have already invested in it and are hoping that you'll invest in it with them so that they can make a little bit of money back on what they did. Now, they don't understand how the market works. They don't understand it's a buyer and seller market full of bots, not of who watches their podcast or their YouTube channel. We're smarter than that. We know that, and we're ahead of them. So I was telling the other guy before this, we're ahead. And if we're ahead, own that. Since we know we're ahead, take it and run with it. Because you're ahead, you're winning. Okay? Let's talk to some people over here. Um, Jeremy says, I'm in it for the tech, yo. <laughs> That's the best line ever, dude. Uh, aspiring adult, I'll talk to you. Ariana's grand, good to see you, brother. Shorty Juan Pablo, what's up, bro? DB is a ticker for Deutsche Bank. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Deutsche Bank. Oh, it's going to be bad. Oh, it's going to be bad. Look at that blue chip, dude. Blue chip. 
epic fail. God almighty. From 139 to 10, you're down 93%. Blue chip. Blue chip. Mm, mm, mm. Stacking blue chips is a terrible idea. Pick up on that yet? Buy it when it's a buy and sell it when it's a sell. It's that simple. If the market's going to go up for 100 years, you might win. Does Bitcoin do that? No. Does Ethereum do that? No. It has long cycles where it doesn't go up. Why are you holding on to it? You don't know. If you don't know, then don't do it. That's peer pressure, and you're bigger than that. You're smarter than that. Um, Thanos. <laughs> so many childhood memories at Sears. Sad to sit gone. Bro, I know, man. Sears was what's up. That's where my dad used to take his tools and get new ones from. Uh, what's up, Nick? Back from vacation, I think. 41 cents, not enough. What's up, Darth? Good to see you, bro. It's all good. Uh, Nick's here. We can get started, dude. Stupid. Hey, what's up, Terry? Um, Tiffany Britt says, beautiful sermon tonight. Well, thank you, Miss Britt. All the way out in California and Hollywood. Old boy Davey says, hello, sirs. Good to see you, sirs. Um, Darth Lab says, what's up? He's the same guy. Um, Zachary Reese, I've been wondering about strategies for range of markets like the last two weeks, say for ETH, where it's just bounced between 19 and 2,000, trying to figure out what it wants to do. How would you know when it's going to range? And what do you know when it's ranging? How do you know when it's going to break out? Excellent point to make here is when we see something that's just ranging back and forth over and over again, um, Groot was talking about this. You see it keep coming back and forth and back and forth and never really moving out. This is where fibs help a lot because fibs help show you those ranges. As you see on Ethereum here, the range that you're describing is the 236 fib from the big top to the big bottom here. You've bounced from 1700 to 2000. That's the real range here. 1700 to 2000 and we've yet to break that 2000 range okay once the 2000 range breaks and holds then the next range is 2000 to 2275 that range breaks which would be the 21 ema okay which is why i think what's going to happen here flips up now we've got 220 uh, 2275 to 2500 roughly back and forth in this range new range new range new range okay this is what fibs help us see this is why I like Fibonacci retracement so much. Helps give us those predetermined ranges of price where things may move. And if we know that, we can lock in on that zone and play that zone smart. If we don't know that, we're going to miss. That's why I tell you guys, practice this stuff. And if you're wrong, that's okay. We can bounce off of what's wrong. What's not cool is when no one tries. You're never going to figure it out if you don't try. If you don't pull a fib and say, hey, y'all guys, what do you think about this? And they say, oh, you know, tweak this right here, turn this here, do this stuff. Ah, okay, now I see. Okay, I got it. And you're on your way. And believe it or not, you'll show someone else what you showed, what was, what was shown to you, and you'll teach someone too. And then we've, been, we've educated the entire space. We've free-flown people from nowhere to somewhere, and now they're ahead. Oftentimes this is said to me. They say, Keith, you know, 95% of traders fail. I'll say you're right. 95% of them do fail. How many of them can find a trend on a chart? How many of them can find a buy and a sell signal on a chart? I would probably bet less than 5%. I would give you a solid over under on less than 5%, and I would take the spread on that too. If that's the case, how could we fix that? How could we make 95% of traders profitable? You take one hour and you learn. How to ride a trend, how to pull the trend line, how to find a buy sell signal. From there, you're ahead of 95% of people. If you can be ahead of 95% of people, you're going to win more. And if you win more, you're going to tell people how you won. And you're going to make the space a little smarter than it was the day before. And if you're doing your part to make the space a little smarter than it was the day before, you're doing everything right. And we're going to make it all better for everyone. Now, is it going to be perfect? No. There'll be bumps along the way. You will lose. Babe Ruth struck out all the time. I say this constantly. Everybody remembers the home runs. Nobody remember how many times Babe Ruth struck out, which was almost every time as well. Use your brain. Use your intellect and find the spots. You can do better than 95% of people. If you just try a little bit. Now, I'm not saying you're going to always win. I just want you to be smarter than the, than the, than the next guy. Tell them what you did afterwards 
and he'll be smarter than the next guy before him, so forth and so on. Bug says, hit one more like. Yeah, y'all. We got three more minutes. Hit like. Why not? It's free. Um, What's up, Moody? What's up, Justin, dude? Good to see you, bro. Back from uh, Cambodia land yet? Um, RDF says, thanks, Keith, for educating us. Still emotions fails me, but I'm trying to cut it. Greetings from Lithuania, bro. Let's go. Yeah, emotions are hard to break, and I know this, okay, because I came from that same camp. I came from the camp of, no, Keith, you don't understand. If you just hold, you never know, right? Because this thing could just go up tomorrow. Wrong. Wrong. We've already proven this with the charts. If it does do that, it's going to retrace and then get back in around the same price anyway. So what's the big deal? So if that's the case, relax. Relax and play it. You'll be all right. We have plenty of proof on the we have plenty of proof on the charts that even if you miss a little bit, we can make it back. No big deal. So don't panic. Remove the emotions. Smile a little bit. Don't stress over it. And make some money with us. Because believe it or not, in this down market, we've got guys still making money. And those who aren't making money are losing a whole hell of a lot less. Okay? Big stuff's happening. And if we're learning, other people are learning too. And this place is getting smarter. I can feel it. Uh, don't ape in any coins, LOL. Guilty. <laughs> uh, Darth says $2.5 trillion washout. Exactly. Jeremy says lemonparty.org for the haters. It's our new website, lemonparty.org. I'm definitely not going to be able to monetize this video now. Thanks a lot, Jeremy. <laughs> um, so let's do uh, the total market cap real quick. I wanted to get over that um, with the last two minutes here. As you see, total market cap looks a lot like Bitcoin. Most of the money is flowing in and out of Bitcoin right now. Alts took a huge fall. They really haven't recovered. How can we see that? That's total three. It shows us all the alts. All the alts are pretty similar to the total market cap, don't they? Okay. Kind of tells you everything's just kind of floating sideways right now. Not much happening. DeFi 2, which is everything except Bitcoin, including Ethereum. Total 3 is everything minus Bitcoin and Ethereum. And as you see, they're all three kind of the same. I still expect some relief in here because everything fell so far so fast. That much fall is a capitulatory drop, and capitulatory drops usually rebound. And when they rebound, they can fail again, and we're more than happy to play that trend. Just haven't seen them get to that point yet. Pre-search is one of the few that actually has made that move up and uh, hit its uh, 50 fib a little more early than others. Um, believe it or not, we were on this buy signal before any pre-search news come out. You know, hey, the whole mainnet stuff, release the video. Before I released the video, I released the chart first. I said, hey, everybody, look, this price is up 4%. Release the video, all that stuff. Price went up 60-something percent, right? We were ahead of it. We had to buy signal before then. Just yet another example of how we can be ahead and how we can win. So, uh, Darf says, waits for confirmation. Write that down. I'm not going to buy exact bottoms or sell exact tops. We try to scoop as much as we can in between. Excellent point, Terry. You don't have to put the dart on the dartboard. All I'm asking you to do is get 10 feet away and throw it to it. You're not going to hit it every time, but you'll hit it way more than everybody else. And when you do hit it, you're going to win and watch everybody else lose. So, thank you everybody for coming. Tuesday streams are short and sweet. I'm going to get off here and we'll be back tomorrow at 1 p.m. for the European stream. Then Thursday, we'll have our full hour. If anybody needs anything, 786unlimited.com is the website. It's not going to work because well, it did work. Dude, that was wicked fast. I didn't expect it. I reset my computer and it started working. There you go, 786unlimited.com. We got all our information here. You can be happy to hop over there, find the Discord, find the Patreon, and find one-on-one -on -one sessions if you'd like. Recently, 786unlimited sponsored pizza parties for two schools, um, two classes in one school. Got some pictures I'll put up pretty soon on the Twitter and on the Facebook page about that. Till y'all, Till next time, everybody. I'll see y'all on the next stream. If you need anything, holler at me. Till then, y'all be good. Peace.